Good evening everyone, Hell's Unicorn here once again, back now with a new microphone. So for those of you who have been maxing out the volume on your computers in order to hear me, you might want to turn the knob down a little bit because things are probably going to be coming through a little bit louder and clearer now. Anyway, on to tonight's topic, which is the fiasco going on down in Florida and also, to an extent, Arizona. I'm just going to give some quick thoughts on this, and some of this may come off as a little bit controversial, but I think, you know, extreme times call for extreme measures. Whenever you have a close election, voter fraud and electioneering become a lot more serious because a few fraudulent votes or a few dead people springing back to life because of the will of a corrupt judge of elections and a corrupt courthouse counting the votes can make all the difference. In the case of Florida, it's interesting because both of the major races statewide, the governor's race and the Senate race, were very similar. This was not the case in Arizona. I think the case in Arizona is extremely screwy. When you have a governor that wins in a three-way race by 16 points over the Democrat and the Republican barely manages to hold a lead of just under a percentage point up until two days after the election and then suddenly it flips, there's something rotten in Denmark. But... Specifically in the case of Florida, what I'm going to say is the following. There is obvious fraud going on, whether it's people showing up and voting who are not le legally doing so, be it either by voting multiple times or by assuming someone else's identity when they're not even allowed to vote, period, or if there's just electioneering going on at the county level. There is something extremely wrong going on here when you have tens of thousands of votes just showing up out of nowhere in one or two specific counties. And I'm going to echo the sentiments of uh, Governor Scott here in that the Florida panhandle was decimated by a massive hurricane a little bit over four weeks ago. And they got their returns in on time. Broward County and I think uh, Palm Beach County are two days out and they're still finding votes. Most of these appear to be provisional ballots, which make me extremely suspicious. I'm just going to give those of you who are not familiar with the concept just a quick refresher on what a provisional ballot is. Every precinct has electronic voting machines in Pennsylvania, uh, but we also have a uh, paper trail that comes in a number of different forms. There's no paper ballots in Pennsylvania. There are paper ballots in Florida, but we record by hand the names of every single person that shows up to vote and we check them through two different ledger books and they have to write their signature in the second ledger book next to their name which contains their address and all their other stuff. Now in our state you only have to show ID if you're a first time voter in the precinct. If you've already been here before all you need to do is sign your name unless you're on the inactive list which means you haven't voted in a couple of elections. So we have fairly good safeguards. I mean, it might be a little better if people had to show their IDs every time they showed up, but I think what we have does a fairly decent job of preventing voter fraud. However, provisional ballots, which are the only paper ballots that we have here, we're given specific instructions, uh, those of us who work the polls, that those are only to be used on a individual case-by-case -case basis. And it has to do with whether or not there are any irregularities that cause a person who should be in the voter rolls to not appear there. And what they do is they check their computers at the uh, 
the main precinct station, which is where all the votes are taken after the election's over. And they go through and they find out the source and nature of this discrepancy. And if they can't resolve it in the computer, you give the person a provisional ballot, but you only give it after the higher ups at the courthouse where the votes are being counted gives you the go ahead to do it. Now, if you have corruption countywide, and not only the poll workers, but also the people that handle certifying the elections are screwing around with stuffing uh, the uh, pro provisional ballots with a bunch of uh, fake votes, then you're in a very difficult situation because there is no way to actually deal with that unless the state government comes in and intervenes. And I would argue that that would be the best course of action in resolving the problem that they have right now in Florida. And I also think this would be how you solve the problem in Arizona also, although it's a little bit trickier there. Um, but either way, both states are going to have a recount. But if I was Governor Rick Scott, what I would do is I would threaten to revoke the county charter of Broward County. And if upon making that threat, if the county does not comply and turn over all documentation to state authorities, I would basically dissolve the county government. And here's a little lesson in civics that I think is not being taught enough right now. Even, the, even people who are really uh, kind of in the know about how the United States Constitution works one of the things that people tend to not understand, and this dovetails with the 10th Amendment, is that when it comes to state affairs, the states are the final word on everything. There is not any kind of local sovereignty that can actually override the authority of the state. In short, the county governments and the city governments only exist via the permission of the state, and they are only autonomous insofar as they are capable of properly carrying out their functions. If you have a situation where you have a rogue county government that is not only suppressing the people in their state, but also interfering with matters of the state and attempting to interfere with federal matters by hijacking state offices, and remember the Senate is where the states have their actual representation. The people are represented through the House, the states are represented through the Senate. I know they've got that popular vote crap going on because of the 17th Amendment, which I definitely think should be revoked. But, nevertheless, local municipalities have no authority apart from the state. And if they circumvent the power of the state, they can and absolutely should be dissolved. And what you can simply do then is merge the land that the county used to occupy with all the surrounding counties and all of the people living in that area are thus reabsorbed. You don't even have to change the congressional district. You just simply take away the authority of the local government to function because they have demonstrated that they are not capable of doing so. This is how I would deal with the Florida situation. Now, in the case of the Arizona situation, I don't think that uh, Governor Ducey has the dorsal fin to do what Rick Scott probably can and will do in order to get this under control. But saying that he does, let's just say for sake of argument, I would make the same threat against the city of Phoenix. I would just say point blank. Turn everything over, we're doing a full recount, and we are going to disqualify anything that does not meet the standards. And if you don't like that, well, tough shit. I'm sorry to say this, but cities and local municipalities do not have the right to fuck around with Senate elections, especially if it's in a way which uh, offsets the balance of power at the federal level. The states do not have the right to abolish the federal government. So it stands to reason that local municipalities likewise do not have this power, and they also do not have the power to circumvent state government. 
You are a citizen of the United States, but you are also a citizen of your state and or commonwealth. You are not a citizen of your city or your municipality. That is set up for reasons of practicality. Authority is delegated, and all authority delegated can be revoked and definitely should be if it is not being used legitimately. So take what you will from this. I look forward to hearing your comments. Until next time, with prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.